Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of the OC show. This is episode 10, not 9 as I was uh, thinking earlier. And uh, first of all, um, again, we have to warn you about the Q&A. Yeah, so like every time there's a live Q&A where you guys can ask us questions about the topics of this episode of the OC show. And the next one will be actually quite special because uh, Truthman will be here for the Computex because the next uh, live Q&A will be taking place on Sunday evening, 9 p.m. Eastern time. That would be somewhere around 9 a.m. here in Taipei times. And I think Truthman by then should have catched up on his jet lag. So we should be on time for a show with a very special guest, which we will talk a little bit later in the show. All right, very cool. So uh, first things first, uh, as you mentioned, Computex is almost there and we're gearing up for what's probably the biggest event for us in this quarter. It's the it's the world tour in Asia at Computex in cooperation with ASUS and HyperX and uh, Seasonic and Dimas Tech and all of our media partners. And a lot of overclockers are coming. Yeah, there's uh, for now there's uh, more than 20 guys uh, that will come to the event. Some of them, um, most of them will be benching, but some of them will just hang out, you know, like just grab some drinks and walk around, have a chat. So that's you know, always a good occasion for the guys to, to catch up and relax after an intense week of Computex because there's going to be a little bit of competition. Yeah, so, um, well, let's start at the World Tour. So at the World Tour, there's already two competitions. Yep. The first one is the ROG OC Showdown, where uh, ASUS and HyperX and Seasonic uh, are, uh, are throwing some cash prizes for some set target scores. You basically have the entire weekend to set your scores and then go home with a with a little bit of cash in the pocket. Always good to yeah. cover the cost that you have to travel to Taiwan, you know, flights and, and hotel and I would I would assume some beer expenses here and there. I don't <laughs> and know. And there's some hardware provided as well. So that's yeah. also a cool way to, to play with the new stuff and you can bench with your friends, you don't need to bench by yourself. So yeah. that's also cool as well. And on the other hand we have the World Series, which is our HW competition. Where again, uh, one of the stages is, a, is a, a simple target score where you have two hours to hit the target. Then you have a stage where it's the, the Super Pi one in ha hardware points mm -hmm. where you can use any hardware you want. So I, su I suspect someone is going to turn up with the very first Rampage Extreme motherboard. Oh uh, yeah, we saw that motherboard actually in the previous events already. So um, I wouldn't be surprised it's, it's going to be back. Yeah. And then except or uh, next to our world tour, we also have the G-Skill OC World Cup. Again, which is a competition with uh, with six overclockers who qualify through HWBot, um, and they will be competing for the massive prize of ten thousand yeah. US dollars. So this is becoming a tradition in Computex because as many years already how we have this. We had even before that we had the record stage, which is also here this year. Um, I think a few hours ago, Jiskill published a lineup for that record stage. So quite a lot of familiar faces but also a few new ones i saw uh, wizard t is there yeah so wizard t vivi is coming we have a uh, bench bros andy from bench bros long time we haven't seen him benching yeah. in front of everybody yeah. uh joe uh Stepanzi is coming as well and then you have the regular people like nick she like high cookie like dinos like yeah. kingpin and many many more i think in total there's about 19 overclockers who will pass by at the g skill booth during the computex week so pretty that's cool. a that's a pr pretty massive party there yeah 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 i think we actually forgot to mention the the live stream for the world too because if you guys are oh, right. up for some cool stuff happening we have a huge amounts it's actually ridiculous the amount of giveaways we have we have i calculated we have one giveaway every 30 minutes if we actually manage it well so uh there will be a there will be caps, there will be t-shirts, there will be SLI bridges, there will be even some uh, ROG uh, connects, so the, the little two to, to plug to your graphics cards and stuff. Mm, cool. There's going to be some uh, cool prices as well on the online giveaway, there will be some motherboard, there will be some graphics cards, some memory kits, and some PSUs. So Can I participate? Um, I'm not too sure because you're an organizer, but for actually the other characters that come to the event, you can also participate, so who knows? Can, uh, can, can Petri? participate maybe <laughs> your fake account <laughs> <laughs> no not gonna happen <laughs> so talking about cool stuff that happened actually there was some very interesting thing and that brings me to our um, special guest that we're going to have on the Q&A on uh, Sunday so not this Sunday the next one after that and it's uh, going to be a Zen one which is the guy that actually uh, we made a post about uh, this week and he was benching Raspberry Pi with LM2 and well, he, actually, he was benching the Raspberry Pi too. Yeah. So we've uh, a while ago we've done an article on how to overclock with a regular Raspberry Pi. I think it was the Revision B, 
And it was a, a three-page article which broke down, okay, this is how you boot up, this is how you install your Raspberry Pi, this is how you access all the all the dials to overclock, and this is how you actually benchmark the Raspberry Pi. And we do it together with, with H double Prime, which is our own uh, Linux, Android, slash Windows uh, benchmark tool. So we also had a competition with Raspberry Pi, and we already saw some guys uh, clock it all the way up to 1.6 gigahertz. Mm. But the original uh, Raspberry Pi was a single core uh, SOC, so it was not really that fast. And very recently, they've uh, they've launched a, a second version of the Raspberry Pi, which I also have at home. I haven't overclocked it yet. Um, but Zen One put some LN2 on the Raspberry Pi 2 and clock it up to 1.5 gigahertz. That's a quad core 1.5 gigahertz. Yeah. So plus, what is interesting as well is that, uh, like you mentioned in the previous guide we had, it was mainly all about software tweaking for the overclocking, right? It's all about finding where to change the different files so you could uh, increase the multiplier, etc. But this time he also used the e-power from uh, EVJ to add on a little bit extra power to the card and that ended up helping a little bit. We also saw that actually in um, on the regular Raspberry Pi. I remember, I think if I remember collect correctly, um, an overclocker called R Snapia from mm -hmm. the Hardware.info Pro Overclocking team. He made an article explaining how and why he used the EVG ePower to, um, to you know, give sufficient power to the Raspberry Pi. Not that, the, that that little thing uses that much power, but just that it's easier to control and to mm. increase the voltage. Um, on the, on an, an, as a side note on the LN2 cooling, it's quite likely that the Raspberry Pi didn't scale that much with the LN2 cooling because the the way the the, the SOC is, is soldered on, it's a, it's a package on package. So you have an SOC and on top of that, you have the memory chip. So if your memory chip cold bugs, then you might have worse performance than... So you should maybe cool it from underneath or...? From underneath, you don't have direct contact to the SOC, <laughs> so it's, it's a PCB SOC and then the memory chip on top. So you have a problem there, and usually memory chips will not like cold that much. Uh, mm. Maybe all the way down to minus 30 degrees, maybe even just to control control the temperature to, let's say, 10 degrees yeah. uh, plus or t t positive temperatures. Okay. Uh, anyway, it, it's very, very cool. Uh, I think one of the advantages of the Raspberry Pi 2 is that there's actually mount mounting holes on oh, the PCB. So you can PCB. tighten it, probably end up. And yeah, that, which was... <laughs> Accidents. <laughs> yeah, that, I had some accidents before yeah. when I tried on the regular Raspberry Pi. Yeah. But anyway, this is this is extremely extremely cool. I really enjoy seeing little projects like that. I'm actually excited and looking forward to the Q and A session you'll have with Zen One. Yeah. So if you guys have questions about that, pop in into the stream and just ask him any questions you want. He's gonna be here for that, and he's already really excited to be on the show. So that's gonna be really cool. Uh, moving up to the next topic, because this time we are trying to make it. Short. <laughs> uh, we wanted to talk about the uh, competitions at uh, HDI bot, like because a few of them finished, some new ones started. Uh, so what happened lately? So uh, one of the competitions that closed was the ROG OC Showdown Extreme Series uh, Round Two, mm -hmm. um, where uh, the prizes were actually pretty interesting. If you won the competition as an elite or an extreme, you got um, five hundred dollars of um, uh, LN2 money. Okay. Which is which is pretty nice to have. Um, Pays you a few viewers. If I remember correctly, the top three of that competition was Dan Kopp, Extreme Attic, and Strut. Yes. So, uh, Germany, Poland, and France on top. Oh, pretty cool. And there's also some prizes for the extreme guys because the way it was split up, it was some stuff for the elite and some stuff for the extreme. So, no matter what what league you're benching in, you you could still get something in the end. Yeah, I think you can post a link here. Yeah, or there yeah you or guys whatever. can just yeah. check check the news. And the uh, other competition that are going to finish, that's the Novice Nemo, uh, which I saw Cockatland is trying to recruit some guys to stay at the top. So I would be the Hellas overclocking team. I would start to worry a little bit because, mm -hmm. I mean, it's going to be harder and harder by the days to, to try to get to the first place. And there's also the Rookie Rumble soon very finishing as well, which is, um, you can still win some Kuna Master prizes for that one. So if you guys are interested make sure to submit in all three benchmarks. Yeah, that's, that's important. Uh, actually, talking about the rookies, uh, I recently put up a news post yeah. about 
looking at which are the teams with the highest amount of rookies and the highest amount of novices. And I saw that the last time I checked, um, it was uh, PC Games Hardware and Overclock.net and Overclockers.com. They're yeah, usually, they used to battle for the Yeah, they're usually yeah. quite close. And so the last article, uh, there was about 188 Overclockers for the Brazilian Tech Lab team. So what happened there? Uh, I don't know. There's uh, <laughs> Have a Brazil joined yeah. the team? Or? Uh, I'm not sure what happened, but I'm, I'm afraid that um, once uh, three months pass and they all join to the to the novice series, the novice nimble might be dominated by a Brazilian team. Oh, okay. So that Tech Lab team, that's the team of Ronaldo, right? Uh, the team of uh, Arbuas, yeah, yeah. and, uh, and uh, Jackson Schenkel as well. Well, those guys have a good mentor, so it's going to be a hard-to-beat team, I think. Yeah. Especially when you are going to look for AMD hardware as well. Interesting. Okay, so I think that's about it. Really? Yeah, yeah. No. Today we keep it short here. Yeah? Uh, so guys, don't forget, uh, live Q&A uh, Sunday at um, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. That's about 6 p.m. on the Pacific Time Zone. Um, yeah, I know, 3 a.m. in Europe and about 9 a.m. here on GMT Plus 8. So if you guys have some questions about the Raspberry Pi, about the World Tour, about the upcoming competitions, just pop in and uh, we'll be here to answer your questions. All right, till the next time. Keep pushing it.